Should those on the receiving end of the hateful attacks by social justice wankers, femofascists and other freaks be just fine with fighting with one hand tied behind their backs? And for what? For the sake of a perceived moral high ground? What's the purpose of a moral high ground if you lost? Let's explore. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. As many of you may know, there's an internet drama going on right now that started on YouTube that is of concern for those of us in the non-feminist sector. Now, for those of you who don't know, the short version of the story is pretty much like this. A femofascist by the name of Jennifer Keller decided that she is the ultimate arbiter of what people should and shouldn't be allowed to think or say. And not only that, but she decided that she is perfectly entitled to enforce her rules and attempt to destroy the livelihoods of those who dare to disagree with her femofascist worldview. As a result, she decided to team up with a few other similar-minded totalitarian control freaks and write letters containing blatant lies about, about Dr. Phil Mason, also known as Thunderfoot, and send those letters uh, to Mr. Mason's employer, to the police in Czech Republic where Mason resides, and to several newspapers. All of these in the hope that this will get Mason fired and get his livelihood in danger. To make sure everyone knows about this, Jennifer Keller, aka Laughing Witch, uploaded a video showing herself sending the libelous letters, and in the header of the letter, everyone could indeed see her real name and her email address. In fact, she made a point in bragging that she is sending uh, her lies under her real name, as opposed to all of those non-feminist haters who supposedly hide behind pseudonyms and anonymity. Now, after a swift debunking of her claims about Mason and after realizing that Mason will not be fired or suffer any consequences over her totalitarian campaign, Miss Keller suddenly realized that the internet is a bit more complex than her little safe space. After a short episode of her doubling down on her rhetoric and showing the middle finger to anyone who disagrees with her, consequences for her behavior started being bestowed upon her and her employer, which happens to be her husband's company. Now, long story short, because I don't want to spend too much time on the story itself, several people decided to take action in the form of negatively reviewing Keller's company on social media and explaining quite clearly to their current and future customers that it is fundamentally immoral to do business with a company that supports a lying, hypocritical, fascist thug like Jennifer Keller. What I do want to spend some time on, on the other hand, is on the it's all the same crowd, and particularly on the crowd that insists that non-feminists keep on fighting with one hand tied behind their backs in order to maintain a so-called moral high ground. The implication being, of course, that not only such thing exists, but it is also subjected to the dictates and regulations of sanctimonious pricks on the internet who see themselves as the arbiters of what other people should think and say. Hmm. I'm wondering whose attitude they're mimicking. Now, mind you, I'm not referring here to people who expressed thoughtful criticism, though, in my view, still wrong. You know, criticism like the people said, such as Skeptor, who was then okay with accepting thoughtful feedback. No, 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 no. I'm not referring to that kind of people, but rather to the kind of people who climb up on their high horses and go full smjork and go whine about people ceasing to give a fuck about, about what the so-called mainstream consensus thinks about them. Like this kind. Quote, I hope that people start to realize that disagreeing with someone or thinking someone is an asshole is not no just cause to try and send a mob after them. People get hurt, and often those that don't deserve this kind of shit get it on their plate anyway. Don't do it. Period. 
not when it's done to you either. Or this kind, quote, People shouldn't make up fake business reviews. That's just playing to the stereotype of the rabid internet troll who causes actual harm and is the reason why the internet must be censored. Always take the moral high ground, especially with feminists and social justice warriors. All these people have done is to reduce themselves and by associ association Thunderfoot and all anti-feminists to the low level of laughing witch Sarkeesian at all. Thunderfoot and by association his fans were innocent of all alleged crimes and character assassination attempts. Now, not so much. Talk about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Idiots. Uh, these are the kinds of people I'm talking about. These slacktivists who have an impeccable track record of doing absolutely nothing to combat the advancement of the enemies of freedom, but who feel perfectly entitled to pass down edicts upon those who actually do something. Now, allow me to remind you that this is a full-blown cultural war. And the only reason the defenders of freedom started winning is because we stopped fighting with one hand tied behind our backs. Our philosophical opponents have the cathedral media on their side and the political establishment on their side. In case you haven't noticed, Canada just voted an absolute cuck as a prime minister whose first concern was to go after Gamergate's misogyny. The Daily Kos, a highly influential far-left publication, is already on record whining that, you know, just an average small family business was brigaded by MRA YouTube stars. Of course, none of that is true. Neither the left-wing commentator Sargon Avakad nor Dr. Phil Mason are MRAs. And the Gamergate misogynistic is a red herring at best. But that doesn't stop the cathedral media and the prime minister of a nation to perpetuate these lies. Now, what do we have on our side? A few alternative media publications that don't even like each other, and a few YouTube channels, and that's pretty much it. That's why professional cunts like Jenny McDermott feel perfectly entitled to appeal to Salon, the Colbert Report, and the rest of the feminist media complex whenever consequences for their actions are being bestowed upon them. And this is the woman who doxed Thunderfoot. To the members of Comedy Central, press contact for the Colbert Report, I am a woman who is being harassed online for being a feminist. The user responsible for the major uprising online is a chemist living in the Czech Republic who goes by the name of Dr. Philip Mason, aka Thunderfoot, online. And the author of the Daily Cost piece is the one who doxed Mike Chernovich. All of that is fine and dandy, but when we finally get sick and tired of all this nonsense and we start answering in kind to their shenanigans, then all the sanctimonious pricks crawl out of the woodwork to pass edicts from their armchairs purporting to know better how to fight things. Well, here's, here's a radical idea. If you know so much about how to fight and what should and shouldn't be done and said, then please, by all means, lead the way. Put your money and your resources where your mouth is. Please, show us all, the losers and terrorists, how it's done and how it should be done. And convince us by your results. But you're never going to actually see that, don't you? Because heaven forbid the concerned trolls actually live up to the standards they'd like others to live up to. And for goodness sake, stop with the victimhood nonsense. We're not victims. We're combatants in a cultural war that should have ended years ago. But it hasn't, because we've been only fight half-fighting till very recently. And it's these kinds of pricks that piss me off even more than the feminists, the social justice warriors, and the rest of the freaks. At least the opposing side is honest. They want full control and protection by any means from opposing points of view. On the other hand, these sneaky concern trolls who purport to be on our side are actively undermining and subverting our own efforts in defending and advancing liberty, in this case, the freedom of expression in an open market of ideas. And mind you, this is not a new phenomenon. 
The MRAs have had this problem for close to a hundred years. You know, over a hundred years ago, a socialist, no less, was writing about the fraud of feminism. Multiple men's rights and anti-feminist groups have existed in the 20s and 30s and 70s and throughout the 20th century across Europe and North America. They all lost. And there were two reasons for which they lost, both of them internal. The first was internal ide ideological disputes and second, the internal dispute over the tactics. You see, those groups, just like in the present day, were being brigaded by concern trolls who kept on advocating that the non-feminist side should not respond in kind to the assaults perpetrated against them. And this is not even unique to sexual politics. The defenders of traditional family have gone through the same thing. They genuinely believed that just because they were correct and produced research and arguments, then suddenly the attackers will just back down and apologize. Today we face the same kind of folks within our midst. Folks who seem to believe that just because we have the facts, the enemies of freedom will just back down and apologize upon realizing they were wrong. Well, I got news for you. It doesn't work that way. Reason and logic are very powerful and useful tools, but they are not enough to compel the agents of totalitarianism to back down. To borrow a phrasing from mathematics, reason and logic are necessary, but not sufficient conditions to winning a cultural war like this. The agents of totalitarianism ought to, and indeed must, feel personal consequences for their nastiness. If they don't get that their way, then the efforts to defend and secure freedom are doomed right from the get-go. Now let me be clear on this. This goes beyond just the Thunderfoot and those cunts. Heck, I don't even like Thunderfoot that much. But what I said here applies in every case. And more people from the freedom side need to internalize this. The sooner you realize that the so-called moral high ground as defined by control freaks and concern trolls is just a fiction, the better. You know, fuck the moral high ground. If the maintenance of that moral high ground means that we should just take whatever bullshit the control freaks have cooked for us and not respond in any way, least we lose the precious moral high ground, then fuck your moral high ground. We already have a moral high ground. We believe in leaving people alone and we believe anyone is entitled to say whatever he damn pleases within the legitimate boundaries of property. What other moral high ground you need? And yes, in order to maintain that, self-defense is a legitimate mean. No matter what's coming to Miss Keller and the rest of the crew in terms of letter writing, business reviews and so on, it's entirely warranted. Just like when you're attacked and beaten up on the street, you're morally entitled to beat the crap out of your attacker. I'm sorry if that sounds mean to some of you, but experience shows us that turning the other cheek only brings you both cheeks burned. You know, in my country, we have a say which can roughly be translated as revenge is the weapon of the fool, but you're even a greater fool if you don't take revenge. What this means is that whilst it may feel inappropriate to go after the attacker, it is right and proper to do so because if you don't, you create perverse incentives for even more such attacks to occur. That's why fembots and the rest of the freaks have kept on advancing so much for the past decades because there were never any meaningful consequences for their lies and for their ways. It is time to bring uh, that back and stop being so goddamn polite. Being polite is a weakness with an, imp with an opponent that doesn't respect politeness or any concepts of freedom or decency for that matter. Oh, and please, just please, please don't bring up the so-called apology that Jennifer Keller published recently. Her apology starts from the wrong premise that's what that what's coming to her is a coordinated attack by Dr. Phil Mason. That's utterly false. Most of the people attacking her right now aren't necessarily fans of Thunderfoot. If tomorrow or later on today Thunderfoot says we should all stop, I know I will not stop. Because Thunderfoot is not my boss. 
And this is another thing that our philosophical opponents don't understand. We don't function like the social justice crowd. We don't have a party line and we don't have a sh we, we don't give a shit what anyone else thinks or says. We'll just do what we gotta do and that's it. In her apology, she is merely sorry for how things turned out. She's not sorry for lying or doing a immoral acts. In fact, she's lying in the very apology by claiming that she never wanted to get Phil Mason fired. I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. Of course she did. Both her words and her actions prove that beyond all reasonable doubt. You know, it's like picking up a gun, aiming at someone's heart, firing the gun, and by some miracle that someone survives. And then go to that person and say, whoops, I'm sorry, I never intended to kill you. What? Of course you did. And her rationale for publishing the apology is, and this is a direct quote, the need to show everybody that I'm sorry. End of quote. She's sorry for the consequences, not for her actions. She just does not get it, doesn't she? And for that reason, the pressure must indeed be, and will be, maintained. She also says, this doesn't have to be an all-out war. Well, yes, it does. We, the non-feminist, freedom-loving sector, didn't start this war. But you can bet your sorry arse that we will finish it. It's gonna take some time, but we'll get there. <sighs> okay, I think that's enough for this topic. I hope I will see more of these kinds of things, not less. It's time for a world where being a feminist bully has harsh, direct, and persistent consequences. And with that, thank you all for watching.